is still plus politics and thank you for staying with us we took a short break to let you know um i'll talk about more uh, uh, the about the hate speech issue and the bill the fact that the senator has recanted and decided to remove the debt penalty from the bill but my question still stands does it make it fly better does it make it sit well with us and why is it really necessary for us to have this bill when we already have a constitution that has something that is as similar to all of these bills that are still flying through mm -hmm. second reading on the floor of the National Assembly? But I want us to take a look at some of the tweets and some of the messages on social media, reactions to this bill and what people have been saying. Femi Fani Kayade said, removing the death penalty for so-called hate speech is not enough. You must scrap the entire bill, send it back to Singapore where it came from, and get on your knees and ask God and the people for forgiveness for having the temerity to try to deprive them of their right to speak freely. Mm. And Jovita here on Twitter says, they can't stop us with soldiers on our streets. They can't ruger us. Now it's hate speech and social media fake news bill by dead sentence. The more you try to stop us, the more Nigeria collapses. Interesting. Uh, Adelua Ife, Ife says, this is just one out of many. Since the, the sponsor of hate speech bill can bow to pressure from the public, I think Nigerians can raise an outcry in respect of such existing laws and acts that was referred to them. Um, uh, to be repealed through the appropriate processes. Okay. Thank God here says the anti-hate speech bill, the hate speech bill is a mockery on our democracy. The senator that proposed the bill should be examined. Well, this is Nigeria. There's nothing that surprises me anymore uh, in APC. Okay. Um, and this one was directed at the Senate. Isaac Edirim says, if you guys feel the need for the death penalty on hate speech and also tame information on social media, then you also need to pass a bill imposing the death penalty on all public officers, appointees, and their families who embezzle and steal and misappropriate public funds. <laughs> And um, another one here says, lead by example, if at police NG and social servants, aka people working in government, can do their job without saying hateful words or violence, then citizens must learn to follow their leaders. That's the bill that we want. That way, any police officer that uses hate speech goes to jail. And there are so many more messages there. <laughs> They're just, it's interesting, gentlemen. We have very little time. From all of these messages that are coming, of course, these are Nigerians trying to, you know, I try to understand what mm -hmm. this the importance or why this is all of a sudden necessary. And Francis, like I said, I made you feel really old and I like it. <laughs> <laughs> You're from the crossword <laughs> age. But you are also very um, on social media. I see you write a lot of things and they're very heartful. What, what, where do we draw the line between hate speech and overdoing it on social media and also calling out our leaders and saying, listen to us. The senator has not defined what he means by hate speech. I will start from there. And um, I would say that what I see the senator trying to do, not just to him alone, uh, I think he has other senators back in, is the fact that they are trying to stop Nigerians from demanding for accountability. Since we cannot see them one on one, you hardly see them. You only see these senators during campaigns. They eat with you, they drink with you, they sell a car on the road, they do all manner of things. But once they get into power, you no longer get access to them. So the social media is the only place where people can say what they want to say. And I'm going to ask the senators, let them come out and outline the bills they have passed since 1999 to date. Bills that they have passed that have impacted positively on the lives of Nigerians. Uh -huh. Okay, Dami. We're, going, we're running out are of you, time. Are you asking me to find the bill? <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, come on. You're not a senator, are you? I'm just saying, you're also on social media. Yeah. I mean, I love social media mm -hmm. because, hey, we have Donald Trump on there. We have yeah. President Buhari and we have, you know, all those presidents. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's become a place where people know that this is where to be. Mm -hmm. And as a normal human being, you would go there to vent whatever it is that yeah. you want to vent because you know they were, they're going to listen to you one yes. way or the other. But where do you draw the line? So um, here's the thing. I do not believe that your elected representatives or even the government as well should be in the position to decide what is and what isn't as well. We have a judiciary for this as well. And this thing should go to the judiciary. And which is why I think there's also this 
slight feeling that I have that if even if this does pass as well, that hopefully the judiciary will strike it down as well because I don't see how it's compatible with a lot of the provisions of the constitution. And two as well, like you said, the definitions for hate speech in the bill are very vague as well. But also there's a, procedu there's a procedural issue as well that um, allows for a lack of accountability. For instance, going to the second reading, it went by a voice vote as well. And these things are very deliberate as well because you can't see who voted yes, who voted no. I don't know if my senator voted if he didn't as well. <laughs> so, I mean, I can guess, I have a general idea as well, usually. But the thing is, you know, a lot of people So maybe don't. it's just about, it, it's, it's down to who shouts, shouts, I the loudest. Hey, so, the loudest. Know, so we're smuggling in megaphones and telling our senators to just shout <laughs> no, and hopefully let's see if that works. Oh my God, that's interesting. Thank you so much. Francis Chilaka and uh, Damia Debayo, our both political analysts. Thank you, gentlemen. It's Thank been an interesting Mary. conversation. Thank you very much for having hopefully us Hopefully well. we will uh, hear the last of this and it might be in favor of the people. It will be in the favor of the people. No Hopefully. Matter how, what they do. Well, thanks for staying with us. Up next is my take uh, after Plus Reports. Governor Nasir El Wafai of Kaduna State has dismissed claims that the recent agitation for the resignation of the APC National Chairman Adam Soshemole is a cause for worry. Governor El Wafai, who spoke after the recent APC NEC meeting, said the party has not discussed any issue relating to the call for resignation for Mr. Oshemole. He said the party will allow our group's members to air their views but will not be following up on the allegations against the National Chairman. Yeah, you have to understand that uh, leading a national party uh, is a risky exercise. You will have your uh, supporters, you will have your adversaries, and this is normal. Uh, what is important is that in, in the political party there must be expression of various views, there must be accommodation of tendencies, but what should never be allowed is to engage in anti-party activities. And uh, so we, we didn't even discuss that because it is not yet a major issue for the attention of neck. Nigerian roads over the years have become an eyesore, you know, both federal and states. But out of it, the federal highways are fast becoming a death trap. And they've also been used as campaigning tools, yet they get nothing, not even a facelift. The states who at least feel the need to fix these federal highways have become or have been owed by the federal government. So my question is, where does the money go? Who accounts for these monies? Because a highway like the Kalabaitu Highway is getting worse by the day. The east-west road has been abandoned. Why play politics with basic amenities that Nigerians are entitled to? We deserve these things. We pay taxes. Again, the hate speech bill sponsored, uh, the sponsor of the hate speech bill has decided that after so much pressure, uh, you know, uh, he needs to calm frayed nerves and take out the debt penalty. But does this really work for us? Do we need this bill? Is it our major priority as a country where we are right now? Is it the hate speech bill that it will solve our problems? How about giving us good governance or exemplary leadership instead of majoring on the minor? Don't forget. Nigerians are paying attention now, and we're watching. Do the right thing. I'm Mary Anacom. It's been Plus Politics.